Ink Sock, the terrifying fictional regime of George Orwell's most renowned novel 1984, which managed to control and destroy the souls of their subjects to the point where no rebellion is possible. But how did they manage to do this? How were millions of people subdued and turned into docile slaves? In the previous video, I analyzed the general ideas behind the world of 1984 and compared them with our today's society, exposing the reality of modern liberal democracies we live in. However, in this video, I want to dive deeper into the real-life psychology behind the 1984's fictional regime and the techniques through which they control their people. The first of which we witness within the first 20 pages in the book, when a crowd of people is forced to participate in a so-called two-minute hate gathering, during which they watch clips of Goldstein, an ex-party member used by Ing Sok as their main scapegoat, inducing emotions of hatred and rage amongst the viewers. As as Winston, the main protagonist of the story, reflects a hideous ecstasy of fear and vindictiveness. A desire to kill, to torture, to smash faces seem to flow through the people like an electric current. All of this is followed by clips of Eurasian soldiers advancing towards the crowd, striking a sense of fear into them. But almost as quickly as he appears, he is melted into the face of Big Brother. The feelings of fear and hate are replaced by sudden relief that the almighty Big Brother will protect and provide for them. So, what exactly is happening here? Modern psychology identifies the fear of life's challenges rather than death as a primary source of anxiety. During times of chaos such as war or economic collapse, such fear tends to be more pronounced, and individuals confronted by unbearable anxieties may turn to group identity and charismatic leaders for solutions, adopting regressive behaviors akin to those seen in the animal kingdom. This retreat from complexity can manifest subtly, turning from sophisticated, civilized and mature adults into emotion and pleasure-oriented beings that are completely detached from the world around them. It's very clear how such passivity could be of use to the totalitarian regime of Ink Sock, a passive, docile and submissive mind that wishes to escape the risks and responsibility common to being an independent and free individual is much more likely to fall under the spell of the all-powerful leadership. It is of utmost importance to them, therefore, to be constantly at war with the other two opposing superpowers of either Eurasia or East Asia. The broadcasts that play endlessly on telescreens bombard the subjects of Inksoc with reports from battlefields. Positive information about territorial gains are quickly followed by news of losses and approaching enemy armies. Although neither of the fictional regimes seeks to actually destroy one another, they actively need each other to be in constant state of war and keep their populace anxious and fearful. If it's not an all-out physical war with an outside enemy, then Ink Sock serves their people an imaginary enemy from within, such as spies, traitors and saboteurs, while keeping them in a perpetual state of surveillance. This leads to widespread paranoia, where people no longer trust one another as individuals, but solely look up to Big Brother as a source of comfort. And that's when another characteristic of this regime comes to play, and that is their use of technology and propaganda, with Big Brother appearing omnipresent through telescreens, speakers and microphones. The constant flow of external stimuli from electric devices means that the human mind is never given a chance to reflect or think for itself. Unlike with books, which allow people to take time to process and reflect on what they have read, TV and radios do not provide this opportunity. This is why books are strictly prohibited in 1984, except for newspeak dictionaries, and why common people are expected to get their knowledge solely from screens. This is a passive and one-sided way of receiving information, which leaves no room for reflection or discussion. Individuals are forced to mindlessly stare at the screen and absorb whatever is being presented without the chance to think critically or engage with the material. Such people are in a state of hypnosis, which isn't a far-fetched thing to say. In 1969, Dr. Herbert Krugman decided to find out what happens inside of a brain of a person watching TV. When flicking through TV, he found out that after mere 30 seconds, the subject's brain waves switched from the 
beta waves indicating alertness and consciousness into alpha waves indicating an unfocused passive state of mind furthermore the left hemisphere of brain which is responsible for logical process of information was tuned out the moment a subject was given a magazine or a book however the functions of the brain were reversed back to the critical state of thinking what is especially horrifying is that the state of mind one experiences while watching tv is similar to being hypnotized this is how Ingsoc manipulates its subjects into accepting even the most absurd and contradictory ideas by constantly activating beta waves in their brains. For instance, they announced that the chocolate ration has been increased to 20 grams a week, when only a day before they had announced that it would be reduced to the same amount. The people of Oceania have lost their ability to reason and think critically. In the book, the best example of such a brainless consumer of propaganda is the character of Parson, a middle-aged man who blindly accepts anything parties does or says, cheerfully smiling when served fake meat, and even says that he's happy about being arrested by the thought police later in the novel. However, those who resist the propaganda just like Winston are brutally forced to embrace the party line, as Winston sees one of the ex-party members deemed as a traitor sitting in a bar, right after he witnessed his confession on a telescreen. Once a proud revolutionary and intellectual, now a broken down shallow shell of a human being. And towards the end of the book, Winston gets to experience the very same breaking of his own mind, as he's arrested by the thought police and taken into underground dungeons of Ministry of Love. Throughout the brutal torture sessions, he discovers a distinctive aspect of Ingsoc's approach to persecuting heretics. Unlike past regimes, Ingsoc doesn't aim for mere destruction, but rather seeks actual conversion. We capture his inner mind, we reshape him. Everything will be dead inside of you. We shall squeeze you empty, and then we shall fill you with ourselves. It might seem like a fictional idea, but totalitarian regimes have been able to extract false confessions from their victims all throughout the 20th century. During the Korean War, Colonel Frank H. Schwebel, an officer of United States Marine Corps, was captured and imprisoned by the Chinese communists. After months of growing life in prison, he signed a well-known confession, stating that the United States States was carrying on a germ warfare against the Chinese people. That confession ended up being a propaganda tool of the communist regime. The news reached all over the world. USA is killing the peaceful people of China with bombs containing infectious diseases. The confession was detailed, stating names, places, meetings and conferences. None of it however was true. The words were mine, the colonel stated later when freed from the prison, but the thoughts were theirs. That's the thing I struggle to explain. Explain how a person can write something he knows is false and yet to sense it, to feel it, to make it seem real. What fictional character of Winston in the book 1984 as well as real life Colonel Schwebel experienced was menticide from Latin mens, meaning mind, and sedium, which means killing. According to Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the most effective way to break a person's mental state is through sleep deprivation, coupled with starvation, isolation, and thirst. These tactics are designed to destroy the rational side of the human psyche and reduce the prisoner to an animal-like state. The consistent questioning and repetition of the same inquiries can cause confusion and chaos in the mind of a sleep deprived prisoner. It makes them doubt their own thoughts and feelings, leading them to question their sanity. This is precisely how O'Brien breaks Winston's will, by constantly asking him how many fingers he sees, even though it is clear that it's four of them. Eventually, Winston begins to believe that it's five. However, what is more significant in the process of extracting a false confession is the ability of the torturer to unearth deeper subconscious guilt from the prisoner. O'Brien does this by pointing out to Winston that he is not a good person, because before when he tried to join the rebel group, Winston proclaimed that he is willing to do anything possible to destroy Ingsoc, including killing and mutilating. This shakes Winston's concept of his own virtue, leading him to question his own morality 
and sanity even more. Deep within all of us lie hidden feelings of guilt, which can be brought to the surface under extreme stress. This guilt is based on the repressed parts of our personality, many of which tend to be antisocial such as violent or rebellious fantasies. Carl Jung called this the shadow. It is the primitive and violent aspect within all of us that leads to the urge to confess under circumstances of terror and depression. The very fact of prolonged interrogation can re-arouse the hidden and unconscious guilt in the victim. At a time of extreme emotion, after constant accusation and day-long interrogation, when he has been deprived of sleep and reduced to a state of utter despair, the victim may lose the capacity to distinguish between the real criminal act of which he is accused and his own fantasized unconscious guilt. Although people tend to have different limits, eventually everyone is deemed to break under such stress at one point or another. Virtually all American POWs during Korean War collaborated at one time or another with the communists. Many lost their identity as Americans and thousands lost their will to live. Click on this video if you want to learn more and as always keep your boss full and your stomach empty.